Urban Decay recently released the Naked Ultraviolet Palette. If you guys have uh, been with our channel for a while, you probably heard me talk about the last Naked Palette they released, and I mentioned that the Naked 2 was actually the very first Prestige brand palette I ever received. So it kind of has, the whole line kind of has a very nostalgic place in my heart. Uh, it's very hard for me not to buy them. So a lot of people anti-hauled it. Uh, some people who did buy it didn't really have like a great response to it. I am very much a purple person. So I said, you know what? I wanna know, I need to know. So I waited, I did wait for Ulta to release it because I wanted to get my points for it. You guys know me. But this is what the outside of it looks like. It's really pretty packaging. And then you open it up and it does have an absolute beautiful spectrum of like purples. I really like this mint shade here. My biggest complaint just upon initial inspection, it seems that uh, most of the colors have some sort of glitter reflectiveness to it, which is not what I normally gravitate towards in a palette. I actually would prefer to have like three or four really good glitter pigments in a palette and then the rest be mainly mattes, maybe with a little shimmer to it. I had to know, I had to know. So we're gonna do it first impressions of that today. During that haul, I actually also picked up a couple Milani uh, highlighters. I did wanna go ahead and use this one as well because I picked up three and one of them was a really beautiful purple shade and it is gorgeous. It looks like it's gonna be super pigmented, very holographic, like with that multi-dimensional shimmer in there. So um, this one is, it's the Ludicrous Lights Pinkaroo. I think it's gonna go really nicely with this purple palette. So, uh, so yeah, we're gonna do both of those today. So, uh, so I've explained enough, let's jump into these colors. I am of course gonna start with my highlighter. Pretty much everything else in my face is done. So like, why not? Let's finish this up. Oh, huh, interesting. I hope it's showing up. I can kind of see the reflection in the camera. So I'm hoping it's showing up on camera. Definitely not as like, easy to apply as I was hoping it would be. It's kind of sporadic in its application, but still really pretty. It's definitely catching the light in different areas that I'm not realizing when I first put it on. You can really see it on the nose, at least in, in my mirror you can. I hope you guys can see it on camera as well. I like it, definitely not what I was hoping for. I was hoping it was gonna be kind of like the, um, like that Wet n Wild palette that they put out a little while ago, which I can't remember. They did an original one that had like super bright colors, like a blue and a green and a yellow and a pink, I think. Um, and then they put out like a neutral one a couple, like a year later. I really loved the first one and the second one was kind of like meh. I was hoping it would be kind of like that where it was like a nice, like affordable brand that really gave you some like great payoff. It's good, but it's not the best highlighter I have. Disappointment. Disappointed! You live and learn. It was $5 on sale. So I'm not really too, I'm not too upset about it. All right, that's done. Now let's take a look at the palette itself and let's see what I'm thinking for the overall eye look. I really like the shade Euphoric. I think that might make a nice like blending shade. So what the game plan in my uh, my mind is, it's gonna be very glittery. Let's just let's just acknowledge that because it's mainly glitter palette. So this is what I'm thinking for my uh, my lid. My whole lid, just gonna do my whole lid, not do like a little thing back here and then do a different color. No, no, not today. We're doing the whole lid like this. We're doing a blending shade of this. We're gonna go in with probably concealer and clean up, do like a demi, um, cut crease, like a half cut crease. Do this to darken up the back a little bit. It's If it's not this, it's gonna be this, but I'm thinking this one is a little bit more purpley. So, um, and this one would be purple dust. So, uh, so cyberpunk on the lid, euphoric as the blending, purple dust as the darkening shade in the back corner. And then for our glitter pigment, honestly, I'm not having one that I love. So I think I'm gonna go in with Lucid and just be like, screw it, let's see what this mint looks like. Um, and then if we need a blending shade for the brow line, it's probably gonna be Mind Slip. I'm thinking either Trippin as like a highlight shade above the brow bone or um, potentially Daze, which has glitter reflectiveness to it. But I'm thinking Trippin is probably gonna be more likely what winds up happening. So uh, I've given you guys my game plan, my breakdown, if you will. Let us see how this look turns out. Already threw something. I am gonna use the brush. I was like using the brush for the Naked palettes just to see. They all are like similar with the dual ended, one that's like kind of tapered and one that's kind of a blending brush. But they're all slightly different too. This one's kind of more of a rounded one and this one is kind of more of like a tight blending brush. So I'm gonna save these and for our, um, our initial application of color, I'm gonna go in with one of my like flatter brushes. Cyberpunk is very, it's very glittery. That's what it looks like on the brush. Much lighter than I was expecting. I was kind of hoping it would be a lot darker, but it's very light. Very light, actually. Like way lighter than I was hoping for. It is stacking really well though. I feel like that second kind of 
round went, uh, went on a lot darker. There is a good amount of fallout on my nose. I can see it all over my nose over here, but it's pretty. It is giving just like a little bit of a patchy application though. There are definitely some areas where it's picking up better. But like I said, it seems to be laying on, layering on very well. So once I go back in and touch up those areas that I feel like are a little bit more sparse, it seems to be um, packing on pretty well. So just while I'm over here, I'm gonna do just a touch on the under eye too. Not bad. It's not my favorite purple, if I'm being honest. It's not my favorite purple that I own, but like, it's not awful. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Does that make sense? Like I don't, I'm not disappointed, but I'm not excited. I feel like I could have waited for this one to go on sale. So I didn't pay the full like $45 or whatever it cost. It was like, I could have waited for it to be like 50% off at Black Friday, but I also wanted to know. So, you know, here we are. Okay, so that's basically done. Let's go in with Warning, which is that lighter purple shade I said I was gonna use for the, um, the wait, no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't talk about Warning at all, but I kind of like Warning. Warning is this guy right here. I kind of like him. I was gonna use Euphoric as my blending shade, but I think we're changing the game. We're gonna do Warning, I think. Yes, yes I am. I'm gonna do it, whatever. What does it matter? What, I mean, like it's, I'm literally just doing this for you guys. So if it looks terrible, all I'm gonna do is sit in my house afterwards. So what does it matter? What does it matter? <sighs> I feel like I'm having to work really hard to pick up anything on my brush to get payoff. And maybe that's why I'm not loving it a lot right now. The colors aren't bad, they're really not bad, but I'm literally having to go like, just to get like a little bit of payoff. And there doesn't appear to be a ton of fallout on the palette, but when I'm doing it on my face, like I can just see like, like pigment fragments all down in this area. When we turned off the camera, I wiped off my, my nose because it was just so much purple on there. It looked like a, I don't know like a Prince show, I don't know. It was a lot of purple, but I'm not dislike. Like I don't, don't dislike what's happening here. I just, ah, I'm not happy. Great job explaining things. Yeah, <laughs> listen to me explain things that I don't even know how to explain to myself. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the glitter though. Shockingly enough, that's not my complaint with this palette. I actually am really, I feel like I could go to a rave. I could use this palette and I could go to like a, like a techno show or like a rave or something. There's just so much glitter. Like I and I'm not I'm not opposed to it, which normally I would be opposed to it, but it's actually very subtle. It just makes it look shiny and I'm liking that a lot. I'm liking I'm a fan of that aspect of this. So that is something that I have to say is a pos it's a definitely a positive in my opinion because normally with mainly glitter pigmented shadows and palettes when you're trying to create a look out of it, I just don't like it. I just think it's too much too as somebody who loves glitter, I think there just needs to be moderation with it. And I feel like when you have an all glitter shade range in a palette, you wind up kind of making it look a little bit like, uh, for me at least, I don't know. Some people may be the exact opposite. They may be like, I want every shade to be glitter. I just don't want any mattes and I, I just don't feel that way. So, but this one is not, it's not the worst that I've used. So I'm actually kind of digging what's happening. I'm just, the process of getting there seems to be um, more of a hassle than I was hoping it would be, if that makes sense. I really wanted to do a cut crease. I'm gonna still do it because I promised I would do it, but I'm kind of like liking this purple vibe, but I want to know what the mint looks like. I want to know what Lucid looks like. So we're gonna do that anyway. We're gonna just say, let's let's just do this. Oh, there's like a touch of blue from the last time I did a blue eye look on here, which is fine because we're going in with mint. So hopefully it won't make it too bad. <laughs> did it. And I gotta do the other eye. I don't dislike how it looks though. It's so, oh, thunder. It's like so sunny outside, but that was really loud thunder. So I guess it's about to rain. I thought it was supposed to rain all day, but it hadn't. It rained when I went to work and then I got home from work and it was like sunny and I was trying to sleep. It was very annoying. If you've never watched this before, I work in the middle of the night. All right, I have to know, I need to know. So I'm going in with purple dust, which is the darker, it's very glitter, very glitter pigmented. Looks like it's gonna be almost like a dark blue type black glitter shade, which I think might play well with that mint shade that we're gonna use on the inner corner, but I just, or on the inner corner, on the lid over here. But I just don't, I need to know. I need to know what's gonna happen with this. I'm not sure. I like it. I just, <sighs> that's the whole vibe that I have right now. It's just like, I don't dislike it, but I don't like it. And I don't know why I don't like it, but I just don't. All right, let's try this mint shade. I gotta know. The mint is honestly one, it doesn't really fit with all the other purples and everything, but it was one of the most eye-catching in my opinion. So I wanna see how this plays out. Oh crap, holy crap. 
I think this might be my favorite shade in the palette. Um, I think this might be kind of its saving grace, if you will. Um, Cause like I said, I don't hate the palette, but I'm just not sure it's like worth anything. <laughs> That sounds awful. I don't mean it's like, oh, it's not worth anything. I just mean like, what, even though that's exactly what I said. I just mean, I don't know if it's worth investing uh, 50 bucks in. I still probably wouldn't recommend even for that beautiful mint shade, it being worth 50 bucks, but like maybe if it goes on sale at like, you know, Black Friday time, which probably will happen. Maybe consider picking it up if it's like 50% off or 30% off or something. This mint shade is one that I have not really gotten in my collection anywhere else. Um, I really like it and I really think it does a good job of playing off of those purple shades, even though it's a very much a contrast for what kind of you would expect for this palette. I am into it. I'm I'm definitely, in, I'm a fan. I think I left my blending brush on the bed. While Nikki's grabbing my blending brush, let me do the other eye. All right, I'm gonna go in with Trippin and just do like a little bit up here, just to kind of like meh. Just kind of like meh. Today's word of the day is meh. All right. I don't think I'm gonna do anything else to it. I know I talked kind of like, maybe I would do some stuff under my eyebrows and stuff like that. I kind of like how it's looking, shockingly. Um, as much as I kind of was mm, about the palette, I like the look. Like, I don't know how I feel about the palette, but I like how it turned out, if that makes any sense. I know I probably sound like I'm on drugs. But there are some times where I love a palette and I just don't like what I did with the makeup. And there are some times I actually like how the makeup turned out and I'm just like, still not sure how I feel about the palette. That's kind of what's happening today. I wanna see what it looks like with mascara on. And then I'll kind of give you guys the final summation. If you want my honest opinion about what I'm feeling right now, do I think it's worth you buying it at full price at the moment? Probably not, just 100% honestly. I'm not disappointed. I picked it up because it does have such a nostalgia for me. And I'm actually very excited about how this looked, but do I think it's gonna be a staple in my everyday use? Do I think I'm gonna go for it? Am I biased? Yes, because I have a ton of palettes. So there's a lot to compete with. That being said, I just don't think that even if I had a few palettes, this would be one of the ones that I would wanna make sure was in my collection, if that makes sense. That's the way I'm responding to it. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It means maybe wait for it to be on sale. It's gonna happen. They put the cherry on sale. They put the honey on sale. They put a lot of the ones that are not the originals on sale. So I give it a couple months and it, you might be able to get it for like 50% off, which is probably what I should have waited to do. But like I said, you know, I had to know. I had to know just for, Good measure, I'm gonna use their uh, their Urban Decay Perversion Bigger Blacker Batter Mascara today, which I do like. I'll probably combine it with the one that has more of a, um, a separated bristled comb as well, like the NARS Audacious, or um, I think I have a Clinique one in here that has some pretty good kind of spiky lash uh, combers, as I like to call them. Go in and kind of comb out all the chunkiness. Just kidding, we're gonna use the Ulta Beauty Maximum Lashes to comb it out because that's what I grabbed first. That's what it looks like. Just has those nice little kind of spiky bristles so I can kind of get through and, and give it just a little bit more length and hopefully comb out some of the clumpy areas. All right, I'm actually gonna go in with just a little bit more of the mint shade on this eye. I feel like it's just kind of coming off like whitish on this eye, like it's really sporadically applied. And I wanna just get it to be a little bit more present. There she is, how she blows. So this is our final look. I think I gave you guys a pretty good uh, idea of how I'm feeling about this palette. I do stand by, I don't think it's a bad palette. I just don't think it's one that everybody needs to go run out and buy right away. I'm glad I got it, once again, for the more of the nostalgia reason. And I actually really like how today's eye look turned out. If you guys have picked up the palette, I would love uh, to, to hear your thoughts on it. The packaging is gorgeous. Um, the colors are definitely different than anything they put in their, um, their Naked collection before. And honestly, what I will say about this particular line is it's very on brand for Urban Decay. Maybe that's why I don't love it as much because the Naked collection has kind of always been something that's a little bit more off their norm for them uh, because they are normally those bright purple and those hyper glitter shades and all the things that you expect to see from like, you know, their full spectrum palettes and the things that they've released in the past. And the naked palettes have kind of been something that's a little bit different, a little bit softer for them. So maybe that's why I'm not sure that this really fits the aesthetic that they release for those normally. Um, but I do think that it's it's a good palette. It's definitely, um, it's quality makeup. I love Urban Decay. Just maybe wait for it. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe test out the water. See if it goes on sale. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Just save yourself a couple bucks, whatever. Okay, so I went and fixed my hair without the ears on. And um, this is the final look. I'm really happy with it, actually. I it's When I look at it in the mirror, I'm, I'm kind of a fan of it. I think I would definitely recreate this look um, and wear it out. 
if I had the occasion to, or if I just felt like it, cause that's kind of what I do anyway. I would really recommend it for somebody who probably has an extensive makeup collection and just wants to add some more unique stuff to it rather than somebody who's looking for like a key stable product because I just don't feel like you're going to wind up using it every day if you buy it, if that makes sense. That's my final thoughts on it. Uh, once again, palette, inside a palette. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. We'd love for you to be part of the Dark Angel family. And other than that, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and you stay girly with a dark twist.